So um, this was uh, 3A, um, standard part A, 10 marks, um, 6 marks for A01 showing knowledge, and 4 marks for A03 showing um, analysis and explanation. So um, as with a lot of the other part A's, um, the, the A03 is for explaining why really the process happens, yeah, um, rather than just asserting that it does. So to get above sort of 5 or 6, you're going to be explaining really why is it yeah, that this self-stabilization takes place rather than just showing that you can see that it does. And I'll explain how that is. It doesn't really matter whether you pick um, a sudden... Yeah, so, so, I mean, the point is that we need an economy that's moved away from its long-run equilibrium for anything to happen. It doesn't matter whether you deal with an increase or a decrease in aggregate demand. Um, a decrease is, is most standard. Um, you might do both, yeah, and that might be perhaps worth a mark at the end of it. Yeah, but doing one of them very well is going to be the key. So, what is it that, yeah, what is it that neoclassical economists argue? They argue that following some sort of a shock, yeah, um, as long as labour markets and product markets are fully flexible, yeah, then the economy can return to um, some sort of long-run equilibrium. So here I've picked the Nehru. Um, you might have picked full employment. It doesn't matter too much as long as you can explain whatever it is that, that you yourself um, are arguing. So what I'm going to do is, yeah, I'm going to take, yeah, so I'm going to take um, a negative demand shock. Yeah, um, so I'm going to suppose the economy heads into recession. Yeah, so um, AD shifts from AD, AD1 to AD2. Yeah, there's, yeah, the economy's headed into recession, um, as a result of which GDP falls, yeah, to Y2, yeah, and the economy is in a short-run equilibrium at point B. Yeah, there is a clear negative output gap here. Yeah, um, output is well below um, is well below capacity. So, what is it that neoclassical economists argue? We said before that they argue that there are fully flexible product and labour markets. So, what that means is because unemployment is high, yeah, the first thing that's going to start happening is there's going to be a decrease in wages. Yeah, um, unemployment is yeah. There's there's lots of unemployed workers looking for jobs. Yeah. Clearly, you know, in, in a labour market diagram, there's excess supply. That's going to push down wages. Um, as a result of that, you know, what's going to happen is that there is going to be a decrease in firms' costs. So wages fall, therefore costs fall as well. Um, so because costs are falling, the short-run aggregate supply function is based fundamentally on costs. It's derived ultimately, its microeconomic underpinnings oops, um, are from marginal cost. So a reduction in costs starts to shift the short-run aggregate supply function down and right to a lower level of costs. As a result of which, yeah, um, that's leading to a decrease in the price level. Because the price level is going down, we start to get an extension in aggregate demand until eventually the economy returns to long-run equilibrium back at the Nehru at the Nehru, the power of workers and firms is balanced, um, and therefore there's no further downward pressure on wages. And what that means is, in the long run, yeah, the economy has simply moved from A to E, which means that the long-run aggregate supply function is vertical. Now, where most of the marks are going to be um, lost, probably, well, there's lots of places, yeah, but if you're looking for kind of 9 or 10, what you want to be talking about is this process here. Why is it that as the price level comes down, aggregate demand increases? It's easy to say that it's so, but why is it so? And what we know is that a decrease in the price level, it you know, it increases you know, it increases the real value of savings. You know, if you've got money in the bank, but the price level is lower, the real value of your wealth increases. Therefore, you're more likely to spend some of it. That's the real balance effect. Or you might think about UK goods and services on world markets. If UK price levels are falling, yeah, then that makes UK goods and services more competitive, leading to an increase in exports. Or you might think about, <laughs> it's very unlikely you think this, but you might think about the real value of the money supply. Yeah, um, yeah the total amount of money in the banking system yeah, um, is, is a fixed nominal amount. If the price level is lower, then the lending power of that money effectively is greater, and that's going to put downward pressure on interest rates. So taken as a whole, um, as the price level goes down, aggregate demand rises, gradually the economy returns to the Nehru. Um, the best answers will think about that process, and they'll also kind of say, well, why is being at the Nehru significant? Yeah, and that idea that the reason that's an equilibrium, yeah, that yeah, at that point, 
because the power of workers and firms is balanced, there's no upward or downward pressure on real wages, and, and that's why it's stable. But yeah, a good answer, yeah, yeah, looking sort of seven, eight, yeah, which is easily into kind of AA star territory, yeah, just a yeah, a functional, you know, ability to describe how an economy moves from a situation that isn't in long run equilibrium to one that is, yeah, together with just detailed explanation steps. That's all that's really needed.